And I'd say the only thing I'd say about that is a word of caution to Joe Budden and anybody else who decides to go in there and put a podcast behind a paywall. You're kind of seeing it happen a bit <clears throat> with the girls on Red Scare podcast, right? They decided to make some fairly um, racy takes on the whole AOC uh, capital building assault uh thing that's been going on on the interwebs at the moment right aoc basically got on instagram live and detailed her experience in four at the capitol building protest um insurrection whatever you may be calling it and also revealed during that instagram live that she is a victim of sexual assault and basically you know reiterated how scary of a, a, a occasion that was some people took that as not as um some people didn't take it as uh, as harmless as it was and they basically saw that as another opportunity that she's basically using to basically cry victim and use that to bolster her political career and um, the Red Skate Girls had some very interesting takes in terms of how they view those kind of things and so far the reaction hasn't been great which is so it is what it is isn't it right you say something um, controversial people are going to have their opinion but unfortunately in the world we live in at the moment you can't just say something controversial and people just either write you off or decide they're not going to listen to what you have to say um, or kind of you know maybe you know delete their subscription whatever it may be there is a real there seems to be a tendency for people to go out of their way to ensure that you'll never have ability to make money again so they'll go and contact all your advertisers the platforms that you work with you saw it happen with the rescue girls prior right with when it comes to when it comes to that um isis merch that they put out for some reason you know people decided to go hit up spot shopify and ask them why are you platforming these type of people they took down their site all this sort of nonsense happens um i think they even mentioned in a recent podcast they couldn't even get a collaboration with big lighters because of what happened prior and them getting removed from social media for a brief period of time i think it might be their twitter feed right so there's definitely a tendency for people to just not just be okay with not agreeing with your points but then going out of their way to make sure that you don't have a quote-unquote platform so if that's the case and you're a Joe Biden podcast um person you're they're gonna have to be very careful that they don't run into the same issue because I remember it came to came to one that the, the news got announced that back in 2018 Sam Harris decided to remove his podcast from um Patreon because at the time I think they had taken off Sargon of a card and somebody else maybe uh, uh i forgot her name the lady that does all the stuff about migrants and stuff but she shifted that i forgot her name blonde lady but a few people who you would maybe say are center right or something um or maybe mostly all right it doesn't really matter but regardless they kind of buck the trend of uh what most platforms are which is you know in, in, in interestingly more liberal and maybe democratic in their sort of politics and they kind of took them off right and there was no real reason as to why that was and i remember at the time jack conte was getting a lot of heat online he didn't really answer the question he kind of skirted around it he ignored it there was a lot of um kind of uh talking in circles and eventually we just got to a point where everyone just kind of got to a silent understanding that maybe patreon doesn't necessarily like the more controversial slash racy opinions that come from people that occupy the right side uh, or the conservative side of politics so if that's the case they're going to be very very careful this is an article here from the new york times that kind of explains a little bit about it it says patreon bars anti-feminist um for racist speech inciting revel of course it's new york times so the headline's a bit you know um what you call it and it's nelly balls too right this is the lady that was essentially one of the people that was responsible for jordan peterson's breakdown do you remember she was the one that writ that article where she basically pretended to be their friends when they went on tour and then a scathing hip hit piece about him using the term um i'm gonna say what was it it was something gender imagine gender enforced monogamy right he used some sort of yeah i thought it was an enforcement it's some social sociological term that you use right it's a scientific term basically and she took that and purposely um misrepresented it as him basically saying and this might have been during the era of um what's that thing made handmaid's tale show so she made it seem as if like he was um championing for women to basically live under that kind of level of tyranny completely horrendous in it take from it but she's the journalist that was involved in ellie ball so it shouldn't be a surprise but you know what well, let's let's continue so this is back in 2018 it says sam harris the polemic atheist neuroscientist i love how they put all these things in front of your name or after your name so that people can write you off the instant they see you 
uh, polemic, a uh, neuroscientist known for his popular podcast, Waking Up, was making thousands of tens of thousands of dollars per month from fans who donated to him via Patreon. A crowdfund. Now let's not, let's let's remember he was making I think at the time, if I remember, fifty thousand dollars on Patreon per month, and he took the noble decision. And again, he didn't know these guys had got removed from the platform. He just said, "Nah, I can't in good conscience stay on a platform that will one day decide that my opinions aren't." um you know aren't viable or aren't don't viable with what they're about and just take me off there right which is basically has been proven right with the occasions that have been happening prior but it continues or since so um that stopped this month on december the 6th patreon kicked the anti-feminist polygamy poly, polemic sorry carl benjamin who goes under the name sargon of a card off his site for using racist language on youtube which is i think that was a big controversy right why is it that you can say one thing on one platform that's going to affect your ability to stay on another platform which just didn't make any sense i think eventually he did get kicked off youtube too so you know the whole idea about all these platforms being cahoots is looking a little bit more um has a little bit more weight to it it said here that same week and removed the right wing provocateur milo yannapolis a day after he opened an account that moves prompted a revolt mr harris citing uh, worries about censorship announced that he would be leaving patreon he also he was joined in this protest by a half a dozen other prominent members of the site including conservative leaning psychologists again it's all these labels they put on people in it why can't it just be psychologist why has to be conservative leaning Jordan Peterson and libertarian podcaster Dave Rubin who also earn money on Patreon and again these two people all making I'm going to say Dave Rubin might have had the lowest but still his income was easily 20 grand plus on Patreon I know Jordan Peterson was making bank on there too maybe 50 at the time of his peak so these were people that were raking in a lot of money and they basically took the principal decision and maybe out of fear too because it's probably better to jump the ship before you get pushed off right so if you're telling people hey i'm gonna leave give them notice you can maybe siphon them off to your own platform which sam harris did uh behind a paywall but still it was a big step to take you don't just write off that kind of income if you don't have some sort of level of ethical backbone right in you it continues these recent expulsions seem more readily explained by the political bias mr harris wrote in his followings the forum is a microcosm of the conflicts that are playing out across the internet as technology platforms try to limit the spread of hateful speech which again i'm not really a fan of um i just i don't know i I just think at the moment, especially now with the world that we live in, these things should, they, I wouldn't say they're like a human right, but they're close to it, right? They're, they're close enough to a human right at this point in time, um, social media, especially, um, especially platforms like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Like if you're not on those platforms, you're basically out of the public conversation. And that shouldn't be something that should be determined by a platform. It should be determined by us. We should be able to decide, hey, we don't want to listen to you anymore. We just turn away and go that way. But in this world, for some reason, you, you things are not allowed to exist unless everybody lets them exist, right? Or, or certain platforms let them exist. That's the odd thing I don't, I've never really understood. Why can't we just live in a world where, okay, if Milo Yiannopoulos is this provocateur who says crazy shit, that the market is able to decide whether or not he's able to make an income or whether he's able to play in certain places right because if you've got a private business or i don't know an, a, a platform business not maybe a venue whatever it may be called and he wants to host a seminar there you're well within your rights to say no because you don't like his opinions but i think the platforms themselves have to remain somewhat apolitical i think that makes for a far more interesting world and again i just think it does more harm than good when you push these people out in the fringes look what happened with the capital building insurrection some people could it could be said it's a bit of a stretch but you could say if you didn't kick all these people off twitter in the first place there wouldn't be a parlor it wouldn't exist right um there'd be no need for a more racier place where people can say you know jewish slurs and racial slurs in peace and feel as if like they're empowered that wouldn't exist if you somehow moderated it better on twitter in the first place so um it doesn't necessarily bode well going forward again I, I, i'm hopeful that it will be okay you know podcasts like come down exist on patreon so it should be all right for the joe banner podcast but i do think it's a word of warning that eventually you will get to a point where your non-political point of views are you're essentially using to gain more subscribers because that's the whole point that you got a patron right you want to offer a platform or a space where you can maybe say more racier things can also be used against you because the racier things that you say probably are going to land yourself in a um in a what you call it uh in some sort of political argument that you didn't necessarily want to be in in the first place but unfortunately with the world that we live in everything is politics right um for some weird sense but hey what can you do